Thomas, aka Biggie Small Draws here with Stay Fishy TV, bringing you the first episode of Triple T, Thomas's Tech Talk. Today we're going to be talking about these hook files and why you need them, whether you're a bank fisherman, all the way up to tournament angler making money off of it. To show you why you need them, and we've got two baits here. Original Z-Man Chatterbaits. This one you can see has been fished. This one has not. It's basically brand new, out of package. So, let's dive right into it. Hook files and why you need them. You go to our factory bait here, you give your little fingernail to this. Suckers out of package. That's pretty dull. Like, not good. When you take your hook to test it, that should dig into the fingernail, not slide across it. I mean, it is scratched my fingernail, so it does have some sharpness, but start bouncing off the of rocks, get it hung up once, and you know, have some issues with your hook point. And that's what I want to show you with this. Hopefully you guys can see that. The hook point on this bad boy is actually rounded. Wish you could hear that or feel that. But it's got a big burr where the hook point's actually been smashed flat. So the idea behind the hook file is so every hook you guys got, you got certain planes. Geometric planes that you're going to want to sharpen these hooks at. A lot of hooks have like a cutting edge, like a trocar, for example, comes to mind. Where you can actually feel an edge on your hooks, where it's been sharpened to a cutting point. Uh, Z-Man original chatterbait. Great chatterbait, it catches a ton of fish. In my opinion, it has a pretty crappy hook on it. Um, it's soft, and it's a conical point, meaning it's a perfect cone. But Regardless, they still sharpen. So the first plane you're going to want to focus on is going right down the back of that hook. And we're sharpening the one with the rolled point right now. The second plane you're going to want to come in on, if you turn your hook like this, is you're going to want to just kind of follow and let the file kind of rest on it from the flat spot and just follow it through the tip with the point of the hook. Things to watch out for with hook files is you always want to go away from the point. If you go into the point, you're going to damage the hook beyond repair and your 5, 6, 7, 15, 20 dollar chatter rate is now garbage because it's a fixed hook. There's no replacement. You can't just pull it off a splitter ring or throw a new hook on it. But that brings me to my next point of hook files and why they're worth the investment. You can fish a jig, a chatterbait, a spinnerbait, anything with a fixed hook point, like a football head, for a lot longer. And you can carry this with you. And 10 seconds, I'd say three to five passes on each plane, you're fishing sharp again. And this all came about last year. We had an insane spinnerbait and chatterbait bait. And as the bite progressed day after day, the bites weren't diminishing, but my hookup ratio started dropping to rock bottom. And a little ways into the fishing, probably the third day of the pipe, it dawned on me that my hook was dull. And I didn't have one of these. So my two or three chatterbaits that were slain and my two or three spinnerbaits that were slain started to become a burden to fish because I no longer had a sharp hook. And I know it seems daunting, but these hook files are super easy to use. 
and sharp hooks are the way to go. So let's jump into a quick sharpening tutorial here. And like I showed you before, you can do that fingernail test where you see if it digs. Just a light pressure and a pull it should dig into your nail. You can see that one's just skating across. And let me remind you guys, this is a factory hook. So if you're taking your baits right out of the package and going to try to catch fish, yes, it will get bit, but your hookup ratios are going to be way less than they could be with a laser sharp hook. So I'm going to show you on this factory one just what three to five passes on those um, sharpening planes that I talked about earlier will actually do. And then we'll switch over to that one with the rounded point, this guy. And we'll try and knock that flat hook point down and see if we can get it sharp again. So like I said, that first plane is right down the spine of this hook, right down the back. And all you're doing with the file is you bring it in, you set it on the back of that hook, right? And you're going to push away from the hook point. So you're going to go, make sure that file is always traveling away from the hook point. If you come this way on it, bad news, you're going to damage that hook beyond repair. So, just like you get a nice comfortable grip, um, a lot of guys use a vise for this, but I just do it in hand so that I can get used to doing it out in the field, on the boat, on the bank. So we'll come in right along that back point light to moderate pressure and just slide it down four five now we're going to flip that hook over and we're going to come in like I said on these conical ones I personally don't think it's as critical um, sorry we lost our focus there for a second I personally don't think it's that critical um, most points will have a cutting edge. Like I said, you'll actually see the plane that the hook's been sharpened on. It'll be a face that leads down to the point. These conical ones, I like to just come in, and we'll do it on both sides. So I like to just come in, and let the file rest. And then, same thing. Try to avoid the barb. It's not a huge deal if you get a piece of it, but I uh, just trying to avoid it. And I'm going to come in on that back side. And I wish this would focus for you guys. We can try and get it to. Yeah, I don't think it's going to. Try and get my hand out of there to see if it focuses. Yeah, it's not going to... Oh, there it goes. You can see. I can physically see just how much sharper that hook got. And when you're focused and not trying to shoot it on the camera, that goes away faster. But now we'll take it in here. Same pressure. It doesn't slide at all. That thing hooks up. And if I take all the pressure off and pull, it's actually gouging my fingernail, guys. Those three to five passes, what, maybe 10 seconds? So, it doesn't take long at all to sharpen your head. And it's just as easy to check. Now I wanted to see if I can show you. Yeah. You can see that rounded hook point there. Where I lost all point. I mean, I can tap on this sucker pretty hard and it doesn't even leave a mark. So that's pretty much a worthless hook at this point. So, you guys know the routine. Let's see if we can get this sucker sharp. I want a rounded hook. I'm actually going to physically come in and use that file to knock that down. And I'm cutting there. I'm taking metal. This is not sharpening. This is trying to get... That burr knocked down. Alright, so we have the burr knocked off. 
Now, since it was a rounded hook point, and it's not just refining the point, we actually need to build the point. I'm going to jump up like eight to ten passes and kind of give it a look. And just for reference, it's got a little bit of sharpness. It's scratching my nail up pretty good, but it's not biting like the other one was sharp. Flip the hook over, find a good angle. Not backside's way easier to do from a different angle, I guarantee it, but I'm just trying to shoot it with the camera for you guys. So I'm looking at that hook point, knock some of the cuttings off here. I'm liking it, it needs a little bit more work. I didn't do that one side very good. But we take it back in to our fingernail test. She's biting a little bit of glide, but she's biting. And that was a hook point that had been it's literally smashed flat, guys. Like smashed flat. You look at it and you're like, great. My cheddar bit's ruined. Not with one of these. A little bit of work, you know, but a rounded hook point or a bad snag, maybe 20, 30 seconds. And that bait is back to optimum hookup potential. Alright, so that pretty much wraps it up. That's a hook file, how to use one, reasons why you should carry one. Um, they range. There's some that are really expensive. Some of them have these little hook troughs in them, which actually sharpen conical hooks really well. Um, there's a lot of different brands out there. This is just a cheap Danielson. I don't even think it was 10 bucks. I like it. It's a little bit bigger of a tool. I've got some pretty big hands and on the boat and stuff like that, a bigger tool gives a better grip, which is less chance of my hook file ending up in the lake. Um, yeah, guys, that's why I feel like you should carry hook file. Proofs in the pudding. I mean, we just sharpened two chatterbaits, one that was done. It was shot. Flat hook point, game over doesn't penetrate anything to fishing sharp ready to pierce some lips so there you have it and hope to see you in future episodes of triple t thomas's tech talk um yeah and leave a comment down below on what you'd like to see on these i mean i'm open for anything we can talk techniques baits Things like tools, hook files, split rings, how to change out treble hooks efficiently and safely. Because no one likes a 4X treble hook in the thumb. I don't want to be pulling KVD trying to rip a 4X hook out with braid. If you haven't seen that video, Google it. That is some intense, intense stuff. I don't know if I could have done that. 4X treble hook being pulled out by a piece of 50 pound braid. Anyways, um, we can do, go over arsenal, like what I fish with, reels I use, line setups, knots, anything you guys want, um, open to anything. I know there's a lot of videos out there like this, but hopefully, I'm a gearhead. I love the technical side of fishing, the components, the equipment, the knots, the lines, the lures, presentations and techniques, trying to get the most out of your bait. Um, and how to properly fish them to maximize, you know, keeping that Lawrence strike zone and increasing that strike percentage. Doesn't always work out that way, but I like to think it helps. Um, so yeah, I love that side of fishing. So I'll talk gear all day with you. I'm a big lose guy. Love fishing lose. I fish their hundred dollar reels all the way up to the Pro TIs at three fifty. Um, 
sick and tired of all the Shimano fanboys out there saying Shimano is the best on the market. So I bit the bullet this off season and picked up quite a few Shimano reels. And I look forward to putting those to the test and see if Shimano's are all they're hyped up to be. Um, I've got basically from the Curato 70 level all the way up to uh, Metanium MGL. A um, couple of DCs in there. Conarch MGL, Curato 70, uh, Scorpion 150. There's a lot of reels in there that yeah, I'm looking forward to test out and try. So, anyways, guys, that'll do it for this week. I hope you guys enjoy our channel and stay tuned for more Stay Fishy content. Stay fishy, my friends. Mm -hmm.